Hi, I'm Drew Festini. I'm one of the board members of the Beagle Board of Dork Foundation, and we're here at Embedded World um, showing off the new uh, BeagleBone AI. Um, so if you're familiar with the uh, BeagleBone, it's a single board Linux computer um, that's open source hardware. Uh, this is our latest board, um, has a newer processor from uh, from Texas Instruments, the AM5729. has a dual core ARM A15, and along with that it has dual core DSP, and also these embedded vision engines, and that allows us to accelerate and offload running a neural network from the ARM onto these uh, accelerators from TI. So we can do something like load a TensorFlow light model um, onto it, and then it'll accelerate that using the DSP and the embedded vision engines, and we can run our application logic um, in Linux on the ARM. Um, we also, if, if you, I don't know if your viewers are familiar, in addition to the ARM, we have these real-time microcontrollers called PRUs for programmable real-time units. And these are separate 200 megahertz microcontrollers that are on the same die. And that allows us to do things that we need very low latency uh, or timing critical task for. So things like controlling motor drivers, or over here we're, we're, we're controlling an LED panel. Um, so we're doing that by using the PRU to handle the timing sensitive parts like um, controlling the LEDs in the matrix. And then we're handling higher level things like running a web interface on the ARM in Linux. Um, so like this is a great example here with the Pocket Beagle. Um, we're doing a uh, panel here, so we're, we're driving this um, matrix of uh, RGB LEDs. We're controlling that from the PRU. The PRU is um, handling refreshing the matrix, and then meanwhile the ARM processor and the same SOC is handling running Linux. And uh, if we were to connect to it um, through Wi-Fi or USB, we could uh, um, load up the web interface and change what's shown here. So it's a good example of how we can break up higher level tasks like running a web server in Linux and lower level latency sensitive tasks like driving a LED matrix. Uh, another good example is um, one of our Google Summer of Code students a few years ago made something called the Beagle Logic. So this is a 14 channel, 100 mega sample logic analyzer. Um, and we're able to do that because the PRU has access to the pins at very low latency, five nanosecond. Um, it can read a, a, a state of a pin. And then on the Linux side, we then grab that information out of memory and we can display it, display the waveforms um, in a web browser. Um, so it's a good way that we can take um, low latency tasks and put those on the PRU and we can take the more complex higher level tasks and run them in Linux. And um, when you talk about embedded embedded vision yes. uh, yeah. parts, right, on the SOC, yeah. on the chip. Uh, how does that compare with uh, some of the recent uh, AI-specific parts of the SOCs that people are doing? Is it similar like this? Yeah, it's similar. So um, there's something called the TI, Texas Instruments uh, Deep Learning SDK. Um, <clears> that allows us to take something like a TensorFlow light model or an NVIDIA CAFE model and load it onto the BeagleBone, and then it will break that up and accelerate the inference of the neural network across both the DSP and these embedded vision engines. And the embedded vision engines are essentially coprocessors that allow us to accelerate um, vector operations. Um, so it, you maybe achieve similar performance to the, um, I think the uh, Jetson Nano is one of the boards. So you can get similar performance in terms of accelerating uh, the inference and offloading it from the arm. Uh, and TI has been doing that for a long time, doing all kinds of different parts on the SOC and trying to optimize like DSP for a very long time, yeah. doing it, and there's all these different ways of doing it. And when you talk about the Cortex-M4, right, yeah. is it also on the SOC or yes. is it on the... Yeah, so this the, the TI SOT, the Satara AM5729, um, it has a bunch of different cores in it. So in addition to the dual core RMA15, we have uh, two Cortex M series, uh, M4s, that you can use for uh, doing lower level latency sensitive code. And we also have four of these programmable real time unit microcontrollers. Those are each 200 megahertz. We also have the dual core DSP and the embedded, vi embedded vision engines. Um, and we can manage all this from the Linux running on the um, dual A15s. Um, one of the other things that I think kind of differentiates the BeagleBone versus other single board computers um, is it's based on a industrial SOC called the Sitar from TI. So we have all the peripherals that you'd expect in a microcontroller platform, like eight channels of PWM, six channels of ADC. Um, and the other thing I think is important is we're open source hardware, which means the, the schematic 
in the board design or all open source, including the build materials. All the parts are available in quantity one from distribution. So if, if you're going to embed the BeagleBone in a product, you don't have to worry about um, it being discontinued because even if it were, you'd still be able to buy the parts and you'd still be able to manufacture the circuit board. Um, so you can have confidence that this is a platform that you can uh, build a system around that you need to support for 10 years or more. So you have, uh, what do you call those, people doing clones? Yeah, we do. Um, uh, both ones that are branded as BeagleBoard.org um, and other ones that um, uh, people, anyone that wants to, it's, it's uh, open source so they can take the designs and make their own. Um, if they want to call it a BeagleBone, um, we have a program where we uh, have a couple different programs. One's called BeagleBoard.org Compatible. So Seed Studio does that. Seed Studio has the BeagleBone Green, um, which they decided to take the HDMI off to save costs. So it's a lower cost version. Um, and they call that the Seed Studio BeagleBone Green. Um, and then uh, other times people will just take the designs and make their own derivatives. Like Autodesk took the design of the BeagleBone Black um, and used it to base the controller for one of their 3D printers on. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility there. There's also these two headers. Um, so these two expansion headers expose a lot of the I.O. And we can then have expansion boards, which we call capes. So we have several different capes that people can buy to add functionality. In addition, you can design your own capes as well to add additional functionality to the board. Um, maybe external ADC or external DAX, uh, stepper drivers um, that you want to have integrated into the system. So uh, is this also integrated using the Octavo Systems SIP? This one is not, um, so you can't see underneath it, but underneath the heatsink it's just a TI um, uh, package for the uh, AM5729. However, over here in the Pocket Beagle, we're using the Octavo system, system and package. So this has all of the chips that were in the BeagleBone Black and Octavo, which is a company in Texas, took the uh, individual die of the, of the um, Citara SOC and the um, Power Management IC and the DRAM and also a bunch of the passives. So on the back of the uh, BeagleBone Black, so here, for example, BeagleBone Black here, we have a bunch of separate chips. So all these chips are actually inside this Octavo system and package. So this is the SOC, so we have the bare die of the SOC. Uh, power Management IC um, also is included uh, and also all of these passives. So we have lots and lots of passives on the back. Um, so like 140 passives are also inside this package. So the great thing about that is this pocket beagle, which is what this board is here on, on, on this shield, on this cape. Uh, so it's just a four layer circuit board. So it's great for people that want to customize and make their own boards based on this. Anyone using Eagle or KiCad, we have the design available in both, can take this design and modify it and add on the other boards that they, other Is it easy chips. for them to, to do the four layer? Yeah, so um, one of the nice things about um, now that all the high-speed things like the DDR memory and the SOC are inside this one package, the rest of the board is relatively simple. Um, so you can take this design and let's say you want to have stepper drivers or something like that, you can make a board that integrated that all together. Um, or you can use the headers and have it plug into a expansion board, which we call CAPES. Um, so actually one person, um, the person that did that Beagle, Beagle Logic I told you about um, project, he ended up making a uh, variation of the Pocket Beagle uh, called the Beagle Logic, which um, added on probes for the logic analyzer. All right. Uh, what were you doing uh, mostly this during this embedded world? Um, been talking to a lot of people about the projects they're making. Uh, one of the one of the en engineers that stopped by today was interesting to hear about their product, which uh, they do a welding monitoring system using the BeagleBone. So uh, using different sensors, uh, they're able to monitor the weld to make sure that the, it's a, a good welding joints being formed. Um, and they're using the BeagleBone to do that. Um, also talk to students that were building robots at university. So it's a, we're always excited to see what people are using the BeagleBone for in their projects. So um, it's a bunch of years now already, the Beagle board. Yeah, uh, so we started off with the Beagle board in 2008. Um, so this was using uh, an OMAP processor from TI. Um, so the, the project started with two TI engineers. 4410? Uh, I believe Maybe. so, yeah. Um, Same, that was in Arcos and stuff. Yes, so this is actually the BeagleBoard XM, which I think was the second version. Uh, this one was the uh, DM3730, I believe. Um, so we started off with this in 2008, and then the BeagleBone White came out in 2011, 
Um, this board actually came out in 2013, the Beagle Bone Black. It's still really popular because many people have designed products based around it. Um, so we still um, see a lot of Beagle Bone Blacks being sold, despite the fact that it's been out for um, over seven years now, I guess. How would you define the difference between uh, what you do and what some Raspberry Pi people do or some other? I think the key is that the BeagleBone is a really great platform that people, for people that are interested in, in industrial applications and uh, uh, traditional embedded applications. There's a lot of single board computers out there now due to the proliferation of SOCs for um, things like tablets and phones and media boxes. Uh, one of the things I think is special is that the TI um, SOC is actually built for industrial uses. I think the other key thing is that all the parts let me come this way, it's fun to see so I think what's Another important thing, because uh, there's a lot of really fancy ARM out SOCs out there now, like OctoCore, uh, massive ones, um, but they aren't usually available with industrial life cycles. So all the parts that we use in the BeagleBone are available uh, with 10 year uh, part life availability. So um, while you might basically build a system around one of these SOCs that are used in a tablet or a phone or in a set top box, um, you might not have the same confidence level that you do with the components that we use in here that you'll be able to source them in the future. Um, so I think the BeagleBone is great for people that are prototyping something that might end up becoming a product um, because you can have confidence that you'll be able to source and build those boards in the future. And uh, TI is doing a lot of enterprise uh, embedded stuff now. Yeah, I mean, so the parts that we're using kind of come out of TI's portfolio, so that BeagleBone the big AI... big and automotive. Yeah, so the, the BeagleBone AI, which we had earlier, um, so this chip is, was designed for the automotive market, so things like uh, um, self-driving cars, um, in-car entertainment systems. So that's why it has things like the embedded vision engine, the acceleration for running uh, neural networks. Uh, so we're kind of uh, following their roadmap of... Um, you know, for us it's great because people are building uh, rovers that can, self-driving rovers. There's this community called DIY Robocars, um, where people are building uh, RC scale autonomous vehicles. Um, and this is a good uh, platform for building one of those um, uh, DIY Robocars. Cool. Uh, we have the rover in the other video. Yeah. There was one around here. Cool. All right, so checking out, what's next? Is there like something announced for next? What's happening next? Um, one of the things that we're working on right now is the idea of a uh, microcontroller-based board that would act as a remote sensor board. Um, so this idea we've been working on for a few months now, the idea of having a uh, board that's running a microcontroller with a Bluetooth interface that could then send sensor data back to a Linux board like a BeagleBone. Um, and one of the ways that we're thinking about doing that is by leveraging some of the subsystems that already exist in Linux. Um, so we can, we can essentially see the sensors that are plugged into the remote microcontroller board uh, as part of the Linux system. So it's something that we're working on right now. On the microcontroller board, we're using Zephyr. Uh, so we're implementing some things in Zephyr that will allow us to communicate with uh, the Linux kernel that's running on the BeagleBone. And that's on that board? Or is it it's not on board? this board. Uh, it's another board that we're working on that would uh, be a small, inexpensive, maybe $10 sensor board that would talk over a wireless link back to uh, a BeagleBone. Hi. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm with BeagleBoard.org. Welcome. We're excited to be here at Embedded World 2020. And today I'm here to talk to you about BeagleBoard.org. We're a completely open source hardware, open source software foundation. We're a nonprofit that supports the education of embedded Linux. We started with BeagleBoard. Um, you know, it's a one gigahertz Linux PC. It's based upon the AM uh, Sitara from Texas Instruments and you know runs low power and we have you know millions of boards out there including the Beagle Bones we developed to get better access to the I.O. Um, this is the Beagle Bone Black as you can see the Beagle Bone Black has plenty of access to the I.O. it's uh, small this one has Ethernet you can do a lot of um, projects with communication moving control and then last year we introduced the Pocket Beagle. Pocket Beagle has the same performance as BeagleBone Black but comes in this small mini tin, mini mint tin size. And I'm showing it here with our Tech Lab Learner um, Cape where you can go around and learn all the different parts of the chip by utilizing the I.O. And so you can 
learn the PRU, which is our programmable real-time unit by using the seven-segment LED. Um, you can learn the PWM pins by using the RGB. And then also we have this nice add-on in the back here from Microelectronica. You can use many of their click boards to add uh, different sensors and actuators to learn different projects. Once you've done some learning like this, maybe you develop your own cape. Like this uh, community member developed this scroller cape. He is really into Christmas decoration and so his um, uh, desire is to do lots and lots of um, LED um, displays. So he designed this to meet our cape or add-on board um, application for the Pocket Beagle. Lots of fun and you can make your own as well because everything we do is open, all of our designs. It's very easy once you've developed with a Beagle board to get going. We've got really great uh, Debian distribution of Linux that we have you download off of our website. There's libraries um, and today we are working with the um, new BeagleBone AI just introduced last year and we have a fabulous um, group of developers already working with the uh, BeagleBone AI. It is a mechanically compatible with all of our Beagle boards so you've got the same header capability and it matches with all of our capes and then again we've got Ethernet, we've got the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and we've got a fabulous chip on the inside of it that has the SOC from Texas Instruments, the AM57. That chip is, uh, this demo is running over here. So this is our AI demo and it's using the, um, the BeagleBone AI which utilizes the AM5729. As you can see, it has a multiple of cores. We use the embedded vision engines to do the compare on the TIDL machine learning library. And also we are using the um, PRUs to do the image capture. So what you can see here in our demonstration is we're running a full Linux distro on the BeagleBone AI. We are capturing the image the first image that you'll see is we're placing what might be in a machine vision application is a good part, that's the beagle, so the beagle dog is the good part. It places down in front of the camera and it will recognize the image, just a simple image off the internet, runs through the millions of images on the TIDL library, it's a deep, deep uh, learning library from Texas Instruments, and then it will come around um, the arm will pick up the device and put it into the good bin and then again when we put down the um, fruit which we've chosen here a small berry you put down the fruit in front of it it again will determine that that is not a beagle and so it will put it into the bad bin so uh, we're also streaming the information here on the display it's all running over ethernet and 100% uh, supported by the BeagleBone AI. We don't need a connection to the cloud or any other um, uh, processes. We are very excited to um, support the open source community. We've been longtime members, 13 years, with uh, open source Linux and uh, have a, a lot of really solid professional membership. Um, our focus is on education, embedded Linux education, uh, professionals or students. I'm really um, proud uh, to have Education Day here at Embedded World 2020 and, and talk with the students about the Beagles. So when we take the Beagle, uh, the AI, the new one, which is right here? Yeah, the white one, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, no, where'd oh. he go? He's over yeah. here. He's over there. I'm a little repetitive. Yeah, Sorry. no problem. So what's, um, this, this chip has uh, AI capability? Yes. So this is the AM5729 from Texas Instruments. It has the dual Cortex A15 microprocessor. It has the embedded vision engine. Also two DSPs, four programmable real-time units, a GPU, it's got a, a graphics accelerator, a lot of performance and capability to do a full AI implementation. And uh, here you have some, uh, some different uh, promotions here. Talk, I mean, you're talking about the different solutions here, the abandoned world. Exactly, exactly. At $25 so, it starts? 
$25, you can get a Pocket Beagle, which is a great learning platform. Same performance, one gigahertz Linux PC, a lot of different projects ongoing with this, everything from an IoT end application to perhaps even your um, IoT gateway, or even a simple sensor sending things to the nodes. Um, the Pocket Beagle is a great opportunity to not only learn embedded Linux, um, through the Linux Foundation, it is their learning platform, but also to implement any projects, uh, commercial or educational. And uh, in the beginning of the video, we had this car right here oh, behind. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so what is this project? Oh, this is a fabulous project. This is actually a collaboration between the university in Texas, Texas A&M University, and NASA. This will be a moon rover that is going to go and collect more rock samples from the moon. What they've discovered is, is that we need to get more rock samples, and so they're utilizing our BeagleBone Blue, which is um, customized towards robotics applications, and um, they've made their own unique uh, suspension system so that this will be able to um, run over the moon rocks. Now, they're also using it for education. In the freshman year at Texas A&M University, teams 3D print and build their robot and program their device, and that way they're learning electrical and computer engineering right off the bat. All right, and uh, I guess this lots of other cool projects out Plenty there. Plenty of cool projects so out many, there. How many students working with the Beagle oh, Boards? There are um, hundreds of students, thousands of students per year actually working with Beagle Boards and projects. Um, University of California San Diego works with them in their mechanical engineering department. We've got projects everywhere from uh, India. I was learning about a project today in Austria. So globally we have people working with our projects in both industry and in education. So getting to uh, design robots for the moon, maybe some robots for Mars, all kinds of, all kinds Lots of things. Lots of fun. I, I wake up uh, later this year, I, I wake up every day with a new project being um, exciting for me. Later this year, we're going to have Portland State University uh, launching a CubeSat, and they utilize the Pocket Beagle for their project. But uh, you need to be radiation proof when you go into space. You need to have all these kind of like, uh, you think that will work in space? So one of the good things is, is that, you know, our device is robust to industrial temperature and then most of the time they in encapsulate the things to help it go into space. And they work with NASA for that opportunity. So there's a lot going on with collaboration with NASA and education. Space beagles. <laughs> it's going to be out there, <laughs> all right. And lots of lots of lots of other projects, and people can find them on the social media. Yeah. Where do you post all the cool We've, things? At beagleboard.org, if you put in slash p, you go straight to our project page. We love to promote projects from our community, so please uh, let us know when you're loading up a project on the website. We have university students, we have a student as young as nine years old who's done a project, and of course professional developers as well. 